All right, so today we are going to cover how to properly do a titration, but first, I need some safety goggles. Right. Now that I've got that situated, here is the setup for our burette. We have a stand, a burette clamp, and the burette itself that goes in the clamp. It is currently filled with deionized water. Um, I store them this way to keep particles and dirt and stuff out of them so they stay clean. And before you ever use a burette, you should drain some liquid through it to make sure that it is draining properly. So I've opened the stopcock here at the bottom and I'm sort of inspecting it to make sure that I have a steady stream coming out of the burette. I'm also looking up to make sure that the meniscus is draining properly, kind of a uniform drop rather than getting maybe caught up on particles that are on the inside. And this takes forever, so I'm gonna take this thing off of the clamp invert the burette and just empty it this way. Right. But yeah, so I've inspected the burette, make sure it drains how I want it to drain, a sort of steady, uniform stream of liquid. And now I'm gonna fill it with our sodium hydroxide solution. Prior to doing this, I'm gonna make sure that I actually close said burette so I don't drain sodium hydroxide all over the floor and my shoes. Apparently it was struggling a lot to get a bottle open today, so. Right. So I was about to fill this thing up, but I realized it's going to be kind of a struggle to pour out of this giant bottle. So I'm going to instead grab a beaker, pour some of the sodium hydroxide solution in this clean, dry beaker. And now using the sort of little spout at the top of the beaker will make pouring into this burette way easier and way less hazardous. Right. So I'm only pouring, I don't know, five or so inches a hand width into this burette. Um, it previously had water in it, so I need to rinse and condition it with the solution that I'm putting into it, right? Our goal in this experiment, part of our goal is to standardize or figure out the concentration of the sodium hydroxide solution. What's in the burette needs to be the same concentration as what's in that big plastic bottle. So I'm rinsing the burette one or two times with the sodium hydroxide. Again, draining it takes a bit. So I'm just draining some through because there was water in the tip and I want to make sure there's sodium hydroxide in the tip. Then I'm inverting it again. Pour five-ish more inches of sodium hydroxide into this thing. I'm overshooting a little bit. Anyway, cap it with my thumb that has a, my gloved hand and inverting it a few times to make sure all of the walls of this burette are coated with the sodium hydroxide solution that I'm about to put in. Right. Empty it out one last time. And now fill the thing. Make sure the stopcock is closed so that it's perpendicular to the burette. And then fill. Right. And just fill it sort of near the top. It doesn't have to be all the way up at the zero point zero zero line it can be somewhere between like zero and five doesn't really matter just don't ever waste time getting into the exact zero starting line of the burette just somewhere close to the top right so now this thing is full i'm going to bring it back clamp it into my stand right, so a lot of the sort of prep and the titration has to do with getting your burette set up Make sure it drains properly. Make sure you've rinsed and conditioned it with the solution you want to put into it. I'm going to take my glove off because it had a little bit of sodium hydroxide where I capped the thing with my thumb. And you don't have to use a glove. You could use like a rubber stopper to cap the burette. You just don't want to use your like exposed hand, right? Um, getting sodium hydroxide on your hands is never really a good thing. So. Right. so last bit here of prep before I start doing some titrations. I'm adjusting the camera so you can see. There is a giant air bubble in the tip of this burette, right? Which is bad. We need to be dispensing sodium hydroxide out of your burette. We don't want to dispense air into our titration. So I'm going to open this thing wide open. You saw a bunch of air bubbles come through and give it a couple of soft taps to coerce any stubborn bubbles that are still trapped, right? I'm now tip, like rinsing or tapping the tip of the burette to this glass to make sure. There is an extra little drop hanging on the end of the burette. I'm grabbing my sheet of paper here so I can record my volume measurements. Right. So here is a Erlenmeyer flask that has a bit of our oxalic acid solution in it. I'm going to put in my phenolphthalein indicator now. I like to add my indicator right before I start a titration. That way I don't second guess myself of 
hey, did I add it or not? I know it's there. I did it, right? Because when using phenol daily, you know, if I didn't just drop these two drops in, there's no way for me to tell that they're in there or not, right? And before I start this titration, I want to make sure the tip of the burette is below the Erlenmeyer flask. That prevents me from spilling on the outside, and it also prevents splashing. Right? So I'm getting my initial burette reading here before I start. So again, a lot of prep work, making sure this burette is filled with sodium hydroxide and only sodium hydroxide. Right. So now I'm going to open the thing all the way up. You can see a straight stream of water plunging into the bottom. You can kind of start to see a little bit of pink pool forming where it's dropping. So I'm going to slow it down and close it here. Right. I'm trying to sort of mess with the camera. I, I realize it's very hard to see this pink. It's a very, very faint pink color is what you are shooting for. So even though this stand is sort of a cream white color, I want it to be a white white. So I'm grabbing a sheet of paper, folding it over. I try to get a good color. So you can see where it's dropping. There's a very faint pink starting to form. So I'm closing the sopcock back up here and right, give this thing a swirl. That pink color should disappear as the sodium hydroxide sort of mixes in the oxalic acid solution. Right. So I'm getting sort of closest to the end point. I'm rotating the burette here. I'm right-handed. I like to swirl with my right hand. And I like to control the open and closing mechanism with my left. And it doesn't take much to swirl these things. All it takes is a little bit of back and forth with your index finger and thumb and maybe some side-to-side -side motion with your wrist. Right. But both hands are involved in the titration. One is actively stirring the thing. The other one is opening and closing the burette stopcock to different degrees to let in less drops, more drops over a period of time. Right. So open this thing up a bit. I'm swirling as I'm doing this. So I'm going to try to get it to go a little bit slower because I think I'm getting close to the end point. So I'm doing maybe two drops a second here. Right. So we started with an open stream. As I was swirling, I started going to two drops. Now I'm going to like a drop a second, right? I'm starting to see the pink persist as I'm doing this. So that's indicating to me that I need to slow down. There is a bit on the tip of this burette that I have dispensed. I need to make sure that that is in the burette or in the Erlenmeyer flask before I continue. So I tap it to the side of the glass, rinse the sides down, give the thing a quick swirl. It's still not pink. I think it's getting close though, right? So I'm going to add just a tiny bit more, a couple drops. All right, so now I think there's pink, and I've got a little drop on the tip, so I'm going to, again, tap that to the side of my glass and rinse it in. Give this thing a swirl. And it looks very faintly pink at this point in time. I'm trying to put the piece of paper here behind just to show you guys. But as I'm doing this, the, the pink color, I think, starts to fade a little bit, right? And so when you think you get really close to the end of a titration, you should give it 20, 30 seconds. Make sure that color persists for a little while first. It's not. So I think I'm really close. I'm going to let out a tiny bit of a drop here. I accidentally let out a full drop. I meant to do a partial drops, but, you know, that's that's okay. It's our first titration, so usually the first one's a little bit rough. Now you can see the pink color, put the piece of paper just to make it a little more obvious, right? That's still very faintly pink, right? That's what we want. We want no color to a very faint pink color, right? So I'm rotating the burette back around so I can read the burette reading. I'm bringing the camera up to show my eye should basically be at the meniscus level, and I should only be five, six inches away from the burette, right? You don't want to read the thing from two feet away you won't be able to see the lines appropriately. And the closer and more level you get, the less issues we have with parallax, where you're looking at the bubble, not straight on, but from above or below. Right. So that's the first one. I'm going to refill the burette here really quick. I used, I think, about half of the burette in my titration. So 
fill this thing back up, get my new B-Rap reading. Alright, record that. Grab my second Erlenmeyer flask. I have to raise the beer right up a little bit here to get the real my flask underneath it. But you still want the tip of the beer at a bit into the Erlenmeyer flash just to prevent when you're like swirling from you ever just missing and having some sodium hydroxide go on the outside. Right? So again, wide open at the start. Let this go for a bit. The, the rest of this video, by the way, is just me sort of going through the remaining three titrations. I think it's still worth watching. I even, I think, screw one up. So, you know, it's, it's sort of, there are important technique lessons to learn in the rest of this video, but they're, they're kind of repetitive. Again, I start fast. Once I see pink start to persist, I start swirling vigorously with still a wide open stream. Once I see that pink start to persist, I'll slow down to like a drop every second, you know, every half a second. Again, that was me tapping off the tip of the burette because it had dispensed. Right there, I'm rinsing the sides down to get that sodium hydroxide into the bottom. So I'm now maybe doing a drop every three seconds. There's a drop, 1,000, 2, 1,000, there's a drop. Right. So I'm going really slow here. I think that's it. Yep, that looks like it's it. The color is still persisting. It didn't disappear after a few seconds. Right? There's still a tiny smidge of a drop that I've dispensed, so I want to tap that in and rinse it. Make sure all of that stuff gets on the bottom. Anything you dispense should be in the bottom of the flask in the solution. Right? Record my end volume here real quick. Refill my burette. Then we'll get on to the third. I th I'm pretty sure the third titration is the one that I screwed up. I got a little distracted and too involved making sure things were showing up on the video, but it does demonstrate a, a good sort of lesson in titrations. Notice I'm always taking the burette off the clamp, off the stand to fill it up. Um, this is just a sort of safety thing of mine. Um, I'm pouring it at like waist level rather than above my head on the on the desk. Uh, if if I were filling it on the stand, I would probably use a funnel to prevent spillage. Um, the issue that I run to with that is I frequently, um, not frequently, but can be impatient and overfill the funnel, and then the whole thing overflows everywhere, so it's a disaster. But anyway, open the burette wide open at the start. Just let it go. Once I see pink pools start to persist in the bottom, I'll slow down a bit. I'll start swirling vigorously. So swirling, swirling, swirling while it's still a wide open stream. I see a pink start to persist while I'm swirling and I'll slow down to like a drop a second. Drop, 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 right? Still swirling a lot. I'll, I'll periodically stop swirling and that's when I think I'm seeing pink, but I'm swirling so fast that I'm not sure if I am or not. Or, you know, as the solution swirls, it's sort of picking up colors in the room. Um, as, as the light gets reflected at different angles. So I'll, I'll periodically stop here. Right? Sort of slow down my swirling, but I'm doing still a drop a second, maybe a little bit faster, right? I think here's where I screw up. I, I'm slowing down. I think I'm getting close to the end point. I'm trying to demonstrate that I'm doing maybe like a drop a second here. So again, I think I'm getting close to the end. So I'm rinsing down the flask. So I'm trying to go slow here. I'm trying to go a drop every two seconds or so. Drop, drop, drop. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to demonstrate how slow I'm going to not overshoot the endpoint. And in doing so, I overshoot it. Um, so the important lesson here is when you're doing a titration and you're getting close to the endpoint, you should be doing nothing but focusing on how quickly you're adding drops and what the solution in the Erlenmeyer flask looks like. 
right? I instead got sidetracked. I was trying to demonstrate something in the video, but people will often get close to the endpoint in a titration, and then they'll want to start staring at the burette readings or something like that to try to figure out like, oh, how close am I? Don't, just trust your eyes, focus on the bottom of the Erlenmeyer flask and how quickly you're adding drops, right? I think I said this in the video earlier, but you'll also notice in the titration, like both of my hands are involved in it. One hand is doing all the stirring, the other hand is adjusting the sobcock. That allows me to, if I see a quick change of color, quickly close the burette before adding any more chemical. Whereas if I'm doing everything with one hand, I have to set the thing down and take my hand up and, and close the burette. And by that point in time, another drop or two might have landed into my solution. And I very well may sh just have overshot the end point of the titration where we see that color, right? So I still wrote down that previous trial that I screwed up because I might not have screwed it up. Like I think I did because I didn't get to the point where I added a drop and I saw a color change, but I'm still recording it. It might still be an okay titration depending on how it fits with the rest of the data set. So I recorded it and made a note of, hey, this might be a bad one. Because um, again, we should be going from no color in the Erlenmeyer flask at all to a faint pink color because we're using phenolphthalein indicator, right? So again, start with a wide open stream. Once you get kind of close, see that pink color start to show up, go to slower, maybe a drop every second or two drops a second. Once you see that pink start to stay around for a little bit longer, go to a drop every two, three seconds, right? So I'm slowing down. I'm twisting my right hand or left hand a smidge to slow the drip rate a bit. I think I'm getting really close. I think this is the best titration I do in this video. Um, there's still a little bit on the end there. So again, I'm tapping that end, rinsing it to the bottom, right? But I think I'm getting really close. So I'm gonna do a part of a drop. So I let it out, close it, tap it, rinse it in. Right. No pink yet. So I'm going to try to do that again. I think I sort of twist my hand a little bit too far, and I think I let a full drop in. It's not the end of the world, but there's still a little bit on the... So really close. Just let out part of a drop. I think this is it. So rinse all my sides down because I think I'm at the end point of my titration. Make sure all the sodium hydroxide's in the bottom and also make sure none of the oxalic acid splashed up. But this is the end. This is pink. It's absurdly faintly pink, but this is it, right? So I'm going to hold it up to the camera to show you sort of how faintly pink it is. But right, these are sort of the te steps in a titration. You should go really fast at the beginning and then just slow as you see pink start to show up, right? But both hands are involved. All of my focus should be on what's happening in the Erlenmeyer flask. Is the color starting to show up, right? So this was for decentest titrations. I think I messed one of them up, but again, sort of most of the stuff in a burette has to do with setting up at the start, making sure your burette is clean and filled with the solution that you want, right? So there's another set of videos where I do, uh, I do the vinegar titrations if you want to check those out, but sort of these are just to give you an idea of how I collected the data for these titrations, so.